Welcome to Audio Guide 5 for Talking Head Pain, produced by the Global Healthy Living Foundation. Whether you or someone you care about have migraine, or think you or they might have migraine, these audio guides are designed to help you make sense of the headache and other symptoms. Accurate information will help you work together with your healthcare professionals to hopefully have fewer and less severe episodes. In this audio guide, we address a key challenge for many people with migraine how it is affected by and affects our work and workplaces. As in all our audio guides, we provide information checked by medical professionals who specialize in migraine and other headache disorders. The guides are also reviewed by people who have migraine and understand what it is like to live with recurring headaches. For this guide, we also use information from Migraine in the Workplace, what employers and employees need to know which includes survey data about migraine from over 800 different workplaces. Our workplaces are complicated mixtures of people with different backgrounds and life experiences. There are also many different types of workplaces and work cultures. Some work teams interact and feel as close as families, for better or worse. Others have a more detached approach, but still with team loyalty. Some are cutthroat competitive. But whatever type of workplace you are in, and whatever workplace culture you have, if you think of six co-workers, it is likely that one of them also has migraine. Surprised? We wouldn't blame you if you are, because migraine is a chronic condition that carries stigma, negative responses of others and society. As a result, many people, perhaps you too, say nothing about their migraine attacks at work. In the Migraine in the Workplace survey, Three of every four people with migraine said they were reluctant to share their condition with their manager or call in sick when having a migraine attack. Only one in five people with migraine said their workplace was often understanding of the condition. Some of the stigma of migraine in the workplace comes from simply misunderstanding or a lack of shared experience. The five of six people who don't have migraine may think that migraine attacks are just a bad headache, and fail to understand why some people would need to call out sick because of one. They may not understand that a migraine attack can make it so hard to do your job that you might as well not be there. Because of this, if you do work through a migraine attack, which two out of three workers with migraine said they'd been made to do, your coworkers may perceive your work effort and you negatively, perhaps even as negatively as they perceive calling in sick for just a headache. The one in six who has migraine knows better. We know that not only the headache, but also the other symptoms of a migraine attack are excruciating. We know that sometimes just trying to sit up when you are having an attack can make a person vomit, that the slightest bit of light, artificial or natural, can make you feel as though your eyes were being stabbed repeatedly, and that every sound can reverberate inside your skull like an electric shock. And most of us are aware of the lower productivity that occurs while working through a migraine attack. At least, that is what 93% of the people with migraine who were surveyed said, and almost 1 in 5 said they believed they had lost a job because of their migraine. No wonder people are quiet about migraine in the workplace. Even if coworkers and managers don't react negatively to your taking sick days or being slowed down at work because of migraine, the worry that they might is real. And of course, this causes stress, ironically, the most common trigger of migraine attacks. Other environmental factors also play a role in triggering migraine attacks or making them more frequent. The lighting, sounds, and smells of your workplace can also trigger migraine attacks or make them more frequent. The workplace setup, how you sit, stand, or move throughout your day, can also affect migraine, which is made more frequent by neck and shoulder pain, poor posture, and other conditions that affect muscles and nerves. It is important to pause here and remember that some people have migraine that is so severe and occurs so often that they are not able to work. And because migraine, despite being the second most disabling disease worldwide, is not included in the Social Security Disability Benefits Blue Book, it can be very challenging, although not impossible, to get disability benefits because of migraine. For people with migraine who are able to work, There are things we can do to improve the work environment for ourselves and others in ways that will help reduce migraine triggers. The idea of migraine as just a headache and the stigma that goes along with that are, as we noted, most often caused by a lack of knowledge. For example, of human resource professionals who responded to the survey, almost all, 95%, said that migraine affects use of sick days and productivity when people are present. But almost half, 43%, 
also believed people can work with a migraine attack. This means sharing knowledge and educating people about the realities of migraine and migraine attacks is an important way to make things better for people with migraine in the workplace. If you have enough support and feel comfortable doing so, you can share Talking Head Pain and other Global Healthy Living Foundation resources with your managers, coworkers, and HR teams. Some of our resources, including Migraine in the Workplace, What Employers and Employees Need to Know, can be printed and left in a break room for others to see. If there is a health and wellness group within your workplace, you can suggest that they learn about migraine and share information about it with everyone in the workplace. Hearing about migraine as a serious problem from others may make it easier for anyone in the workplace to talk about it openly. Some companies have affinity groups, and you could start one for people with migraine. If there is a health and wellness fair, you could ask to be a part of it and share information with people. Raising awareness, which we understand not everyone will be able to do, can also make it easier to request accommodations, which are work modifications that may make it less likely that work will provoke a migraine attack, and that you'll be more able to deal with a migraine attack that does occur at work. These accommodations should be made available to you whether you can participate in education efforts or not. Why? Because it is well recognized that workers who receive what they need from their employer are more productive. Feeling cared for and appreciated by an employer leads to employees who are more engaged with their work, and employees who are highly engaged are more productive. Companies with higher levels of engagement are more profitable. Expressing care is more than a good benefits package, education to reduce stigma, health and wellness programs. It also involves managers checking in on employees personally if they know the employee has a chronic health problem. And, According to the Americans with Disabilities Act, it is also the law that companies must make accommodations for workers with migraine and other chronic illnesses, provided that the employee is able to do the core requirements of the job with those accommodations in place. What are the accommodations that work well for people with migraine? Replacing bright fluorescent lights above a desk with softer lighting from a desk lamp. Computer monitor screens or blue light blocking glasses can be ordered for people who spend long hours in front of a computer screen. Strong perfumes can be prohibited in a workplace. People with migraine can be seated away from kitchens and break rooms and given preference for quieter offices. Quiet, dark rooms can be designated where people can go for a break if they feel a migraine attack coming or are having one. Evidence strongly suggests that the earlier a migraine attack is treated, the more quickly it goes away. If workers can get time in a quiet, dark room, they may be able to return to being productive. People can be encouraged to use sick time when they have a migraine attack instead of feeling guilty about doing so. Flexible work hours can be a very important accommodation for people with migraine. When possible, the option to work from home after an attack may increase productivity. Regular breaks to eat, stay hydrated, and exercise are also beneficial. Ensuring there are breaks between meetings, especially important now that meetings are often via video conferences that require screen time. Making sure people feel comfortable turning off the video camera instead of making eye contact with a screen may be helpful. Finally, because most working Americans receive our health care benefits from our employers, our employers can act when benefits don't meet the needs of their employees. In the Migraine in the Workplace survey, 22% of employees with migraine said that their migraine treatments prescribed by their doctor had been denied by insurance companies. Two out of three human resources professionals said that when employees were denied coverage, the employer would pay for the medicine anyway, something many employees don't realize. Work is necessary for survival for most people. For many, it is also a source of satisfaction, the pleasure of a job well done, the camaraderie of a team. This shouldn't be denied to people just because they have migraine. We can all work together to make the workplace better for people with migraine instead. If you need further information on migraine, listen to our audio guide, What is Migraine?, to find out the difference between headache and migraine. How to get diagnosed in our Migraine Diagnosis audio guide. For treatment options, refer to our audio guides on migraine medical options and non-medical migraine therapies. For more medical information and advice about your own migraine treatment, speak to your doctor.